God's going to move powerfully because that's who God is. Not because of anything in me, but because of who is here. God is here. And let's be, uh, amen, uh, let's be ready to receive what God has to speak to us. That has to speak to our hearts. And so let's lift up all these requests, amen. Perhaps you have time to write something down. But let's trust God together, church. Let's lift up each other. Remember the request, amen, and believe God for this church, amen. And uh, as we do, amen, brother, um, brother Brian, go if you can come back up and open us up in a word of prayer this uh, this evening. Lord, we thank you and we bless your holy name. We pray, God, and we ask we call upon your name, God, that you move and deliver, God, that you move and set the captives free, God, that you, God, you, God, bring him to the rest of our family, God, that you know, God, radically bring us out of God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy, Lord. Lord, we lift up all the Escobar family, Lord, into your hands, Lord. You comfort them, Lord. You heal them, Lord, physically, Lord. Lord, you fill them, Lord, with your Holy Spirit, Lord, power from on high, Lord, to rock them, Lord. Get them these signs, Lord God, we lift up, Lord. Those who need to be saved, Lord God, we lift up, Lord. This congregation, Lord, and our leaders, Lord. Lord, we pray, Lord, even for the service, oh God, that you would join us in this place, Lord. Fill your house with your presence, Lord, and your glory. Visit us today, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just take a moment and greet one another this evening. Praise God, we're in the throes of summer. <laughs> Maybe. And then, um, just like to go through the announcements for the church. Um, this is a reminder. Um, we do have the sign up list, amen, out there in Corey, amen, for the Memorial Day picnic. Um, just a reminder, amen, if you're going to put yourself down to bring some of the food that's going to be grilled, we actually bring that early. Don't come, amen, 2 o'clock with uh, and then I'm going to bring People will be angry at you. They will be angry at you. And uh, amen. we want to get that going as soon as possible. Also, water, amen. Uh, we never have enough. Because we're going to be running around with doing stuff, amen. So that was uh, next Monday. Not this upcoming Monday, but the next Monday. Um, as a reminder. So, amen. Also, amen. I'm going to go back. Backtrack me, amen. Um, we have the financial class on Monday, excuse me. Yeah, no. Financial class on the 25th. It's at 7 p.m. And then the Bible study here at the church at 7 p.m. also. And then uh, the 29th, we have it in our music scene. It's going to be at uh, the outreach at 12 p.m. And the concert will be at 3 p.m. in the So it's been very fruitful. If you can, I encourage you to come and, and then try and put some time in it, man. There's still a need, see what needs to be done and help out. It will be a great time. It will encourage you and it will bless you, amen. And uh, I believe that is it for way of announcements. You know, as uh, we were worshiping God, I just turned and I looked, amen, uh, at our thermostat in the back, amen, that shows what the, uh, the temperature is. And we've met our goal of 25,000 for the building. And I mentioned that before, but it's just wonderful to kind of look and just see what God is doing. Um, it's not a, a small thing for a small church like ours to raise such a large amount of money. Yeah, that's right. That's you know, it's something supernatural that God is doing in our hearts. And you know, um, the, the sermon that Pastor Rice came and preached a while back, and where people would just start giving to, to, to Pastor, amen, and just blessing them, amen, and his family. And you know, from it almost is like I begin to notice these things that as we align ourselves to the work and will of God, to, to bless the man of God and to continue pushing for what is right and what, and what's in God's will, we will be blessed to give even more. Yes, you know, I've seen my own personal account. Uh, we, we're, we're slowly coming out of debt and I'm noticing like, man, you know what? I want to hold on to it. When I held on, it seems like I just lost more. Yeah. And it's crazy how that happens that when you, when you release into the hands of God, that God can do powerful things to add more to you. And so I'm a testimony to that, and I want to encourage you. We are a church that gives. But how many know we can put another thermostat up there and make that 50 and believe God for even more? 
you know, I'm not saying this is just not about money. The principle is we give to God and God will bless us beyond what we can give. Because God is a blessing. Yes, he is. And so as let's just come forward this, this evening. Let us be reminded, amen, of just how richly God can bless us. And, not, and let's not be just, amen, raptured by the blessing themselves, but he who blesses, who is worthy, God is worthy because it's just his nature, who he is. Yes. And so uh, let's continue in that. And can see, continue to see God bless him. And Brother Jesus, you can pray, Brother, for this offering. God, we thank you, Lord, tonight for this time here. We pray, God, that you would move in this time, Lord, in our hearts, Lord. Lord, to trust you like never before, Lord, even in our finances, God, that we will give to you with grateful hearts, God. We believe, Lord, who you are, God, and you are the almighty God. We ask you, Lord, that you would move in this place, move in this offering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I was an active gang member, became a drug dealer, uh, you know, later on to bring 
everybody from Southern California to Tucson. You know what I mean? But you know, God, God is God is good. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, you know, God helps help me to change to be a better person. My wife believed that uh, I could be a better person. Uh, those of you that know my wife, Roxy's totally different. You know, she's from a whole different lifestyle than me. All my in-laws are law enforcement. And my brother-in-law is sergeant to the Wilmot prison. All her uh, cousins are TPD officers. Uh, my uh, sister-in-law is the head honcho for the probation office. So everybody was, you know, <laughs> was the opposite of the law, right? <laughs> but, you know, God has a plan. Yes. God has a plan. And, and so Roxy would always tell me that I could change, that I could be a better person. And even to the day that I gave my life to Jesus, I, I doubted. I doubted everything that she would say. But I was able to challenge God, and, and God took me up on my challenge. And here I am, behind hope of preaching the word of God. Amen? Amen. Yeah. So God has a plan. I hope that that gives you some kind of hope, yeah. you know, because if you have someone out there, or you, you know, you're struggling through something, I'm telling you, I was a drug addict for many years, an alcoholic for many years. And God saved me. Me and my wife just celebrated our 25th anniversary. You know, we uh, we've been together for 30 years, and nobody in my family has been married that long. And I'm gonna tell you, it's a true blessing. Yes, it's a true yeah. blessing to be married to that yeah. way. So now we're gonna be reading out the book of Matthew 14, 22 through 33, and the title of the sermon is "Walking on Water." Amen. So don't, when I'm done with the sermon, don't go out there and try and walk in your <laughs> lesson, <please. laughs> You know what I mean? And try and be responsible for it. All right? So, <laughs> and it says, I'm sorry. It says, and immediately Jesus, uh, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side and, and sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into the mountain by himself to pray. Now when the, that evening came, he was alone there. And the boat was in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves and the wind. It says, and now the, the, um, on the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went, went to them walking in the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking in the sea, they were troubled, saying, is it a ghost? And they cried out, out of fear. And immediately Jesus spoke out to them and said, Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered and said to him, Lord, if it is you, command me to walk on water. So he said, Come. And when he, when Peter had come down out of the boat into the water to go to Jesus, but the wind, let's just go to Jesus, but the wind and when he saw the wind, it says, when he saw the wind, uh, he was afraid, and he began to, to sink, and he cried out and said, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O ye of little faith, why do you, I said, why do you doubt? <clears throat> Excuse me. And when he got out got out in got into the boat, the wind seized, and those who were in the boat came and worshipped him. And they said, truly, you are the Son of God. Let's pray. Father, we ask you, our Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, Father God, for your mighty hand upon us, Lord, this evening, Father God. We ask you, my Heavenly Father, Lord, for your Holy Spirit upon this place, Father God. Minister to your people, my Heavenly Father, Lord. I ask you, Father God, that you will touch us this evening, Father God. Father God, give us words of understanding, words of wisdom, my Heavenly Father, Lord. Guide us, Lord, and touch us, Lord, in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Now I want you to understand, you know, the situation, okay? He's in, you know, uh, uh, Jesus goes and he sends the multitude away. He starts to, 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 he goes and he starts to pray. And as he's praying, he understands what God is going to do. He understands that God has a plan. How many of you know that God has a plan? Yes. See, when I was uh, when I was running around in gangs, when I was a drug addict, when I was being on drugs, when I was going through all these situations in my life, I didn't know that God had a plan. I didn't even believe in God. I didn't trust in something that I couldn't see. And but you know, I'm here to tell you this evening that God has a plan for each and every one of your lives. 
God, you, you may not see light at the end of the tunnel, but I'm here to tell you this evening that God wants to bless you. God wants you to understand that there is hope in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We need to trust in God. The disciples are on, they're in the boat. They're already in the middle of the, of the, of the sea. Jesus, they see someone walking on water. Come on, somebody. You know, that's going to bring some fear. You know, I'm watching a documentary, and I love watching documentaries. And they were showing, you know, crazy stuff, like a boat up in the, in, in, on the clouds. And they were showing all kinds of craziness. I was hearing Pastor Stacy Steeler's uh, daughter talking about spiders. And they were also talking, so they're talking about all these weird things that happen, you know. And they were talking about how spiders, something about the electricity that hits the ground. This is like in Panama. So, and all these spiders are up in the air. They're floating in the air. And it's just something about the, the electricity and the I don't know, there's all kinds of craziness. I never finished school, so, you know. <laughs> but these spiders were up in the air, and this guy's walking through there, and he's taking pictures, and he, they're so amazed how these things go up into the air, and there's just these spiders that work together, and they put these webs together up in the air, and you can see them floating, and I mean, that's some scary stuff. Yeah. That's some scary stuff. So now, can you imagine Jesus walking? They, they don't know who it is. You would think that they would know who it is. You know, they, they see him walking on water. And as they see him walking on water, they start to freak out. They start to, to get scared. And that's how many of us are. God starts to speak to us and we're afraid. We don't understand that it's him. And, and God is saying, trust in me. Right now we live in a time of fear. In a time of fear, there's so many people that are afraid. They're afraid because of this virus. You know, the crazy thing about it is that when this virus started, everybody in my house got it. Everybody. My wife got it. My kids got it. Everybody. Except me. My church. Everybody got it. Except me. So I went to the mother church. We live, we're, we're, Our church is in the reservation, so, you know, they're federal, so they had to shut, they shut down the nation. So I started going to the mother church. Everybody got it. So I said, hey, if you guys need somebody to preach, you know, I can yell a little bit. You know, you know I may not be the best preacher in the world, but if you invite me out, I'll, I'll make sure everybody stays awake. You know, because God has a plan. God used this little Mexican, you know what I mean? He said, man, I'm going to do something with you. Yes. You know, when the world didn't see, didn't, you know, they, when, when people, people would see me, they would see the total of the opposite. But God had a plan. God had a plan. Peter cries out and he says, Lord, if it is you, command me to walk. You know, he, he's afraid. Why would he say that if he already knows that it's him, why would he question him? And that's the problem that so many of us question God. We question him over and over and over again. Is it you? You need to ask yourself this question. What was the last time that you questioned God? We start to doubt who God is. You know, we live in a time right now where people are questioning God. They're saying, is it you? If, there were, if God is real, why is this happening? Why are so many people dying? Why are so many people getting sick? My mother-in-law just passed away in January. My mother-in-law lived with me for 16 years. I love my mother-in-law. I like sharing this with everybody. I love my mother-in-law. You know, they, guys, you know, I hear guys talk all the time and they go, Evie, sway that bro. I love my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law lived with us for 16 years. I remember when my mother-in-law got sick. My mother-in-law got four strokes. She had a triple bypass. She couldn't speak. She had to eat through a tube. The only bad thing I used to say is, that, you know, I used to use it as a joke. I tell my wife, man, I got the best mother-in-law in the world. Because she couldn't talk. I'm going to tell you something. She'd get that finger and she'd do this to me. And then she'd bang on the counter, you know. And so, you know, but, you know, I always used it as a joke. But I love my mother-in-law. When my mother-in-law started to get sick, I started to see the panic in my wife. Because her mother was everything to her. I remember laying down one day and I started to hear my wife scream at her mom and say, Breathe, mom! Breathe! They had her on oxygen, and I went to the room and, you know, tried not to get too involved and because, you know, it's, it's not my mother. I didn't want to really, you know, push the matter and, and, and be, you know, 
in a situation where me and my wife would just clash. So I, I went to the to the room and, and I said, hold on. I remember grabbing my mother-in-law and I said, Jolanda, I said, look at me. I'm going to pray for you. And as I laid hands on her, I could see this peace come upon her. And she started to breathe. And I started to pray for her. And I started to see this peace all over her. I felt that I needed to say something to her. I felt that, you know what, it, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't just let her go like that. I needed to let her know how much I appreciated her. I told my mother, I said, I'm so grateful for you. I'm so grateful for you. Because without you, I wouldn't have this beautiful woman as my wife. I want to thank you. Because without you, I wouldn't have these beautiful kids. I'm so thankful for you. I want you to know that I am grateful and I love you. Amen. She needed to know that. She needed to know that. I don't know if that's what God wanted me to do at that time. I really felt that that's what he wanted me to say. But it brought such a peace upon her. Do you understand what I'm saying? God had a plan. She had gone to the hospital three different times. But this last time that she came, I really felt that God wanted me to say those words to her. And I said these words to her that brought a peace upon her. I love my mother. I love my mother. I miss my mother. I tell everybody I, her room was right next to mine. As I would walk out of the hallway, out of my house, out of my bedroom, as I would walk out here, her door would be open and I'd give her thumbs up to see if she was all right. And she'd give me thumbs up. You know? <laughs> then she'd show me her lottery tickets. I mean, I mean go get them, buddy. You know? yeah. God wants to give us guidance. God wants to give us direction. Amen. We need to truly understand, you know, Jesus goes and he prays. He understands that God has a plan as he goes into the mountain. He goes alone and he prays. God wants you to be in a place where you're alone and you're praying and you're asking for guidance. You're asking for direction. He understood that he was going to walk on water. He knew that. He knew that the disciples would be scared. How many of you understand that God knows where you're at? He understands that you're going to be afraid. You're going to go through some trials. But he wants you to trust in him. He wants you to reach out. He wants to hold your head. He wants to carry you through the trial. But you have to be willing. You have to be willing to go through the storm. We can't focus on the storm. We can't focus on the situation. I went and got my shot in Tucson. They're giving the shot everywhere. I mean, everywhere. The casinos, the liquor store, no, I'm just saying, everywhere, they're everywhere. You can go and drive down the road at the parks, they're giving it, I mean, everywhere. They got stand there. My wife called me, she says, announce it. We're giving, because she works at TMC, we're giving them all out on Friday. Just line them up, let's give them their shots, you know? They're getting that shot everywhere. And she goes, hey, you're getting it. I said, okay. Can't travel anywhere anymore. They don't want you to travel with you, you got the shot. I said, I gave you the shot. You know, I'm not afraid. I know God has a plan, you know. Pastor Stacy Dillard said, well, I'm going to see what it does to you before I get it. You know? <laughs> I said, well, if you see me behind the pulpit, if you see another extra arm come up and grab the dog, you know what's going on. You know? I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about it because God's in control. God's in control. I was at my uh, church one day, and, then, and I got a phone call. From some of the people in my church. Now you got to understand, we're in the reservation, we're in the Autumn Nation. And I had one of the, uh, my disciples called me and he said, Pastor, you know, uh, this is going on. Uh, he goes, This is going on. We found this place that they're doing a bunch of rituals, they're doing a bunch of witchcraft. And he said, And uh, one of the people that they're doing witchcraft on is you. They want you out of the nation. And I said, I'm going to tell you something right now. The devil can swallow me up, but he'll throw me right back up. And they ain't got nothing to do I, you know, the devil ain't got no places. That's right. I'm not afraid. I won't give it an open door. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right. Amen. I grew up in fear. I grew up as a child being abused, being molested, going through so much stuff that my fear turned into hate, into bitterness, into violence. And I won't allow the enemy to come. And I'm going to tell you something. If you see me up here and you see me running around and you see me uh, screaming and yelling, it's because I am. 
I love to preach the word of God. People need to understand that Jesus can save. Amen. Amen. We used to get excited when we were out in the world doing our thing. Now we think it's embarrassing to be able to stand in a corner and preach the word of God. There's nothing embarrassing about it. Right. When we were stumbling on the streets, we thought we were cool. Yeah. You know? Some of you fell off the street, you were wasted, drunk, you fall on the street. You know, you get back up and you keep on doing what you were doing. Now as a Christian, you fall and you don't want to get back up. Right. Come on, somebody, you need to get up. God has a plan for your life. The past is the past. Let it go. I get people call me all the time. Oh, Pastor, I got drunk last night. I'm going to go get drunk again today because I messed up last night. <laughs> no. You're going to dust yourself off. You're going to go take a shower. You're going to come back to church. Amen. Don't get into that pity party. I'm not into that. Right. Don't tell them, oh, I got drunk. I already messed up, so I'm going to mess up again. It don't work that way. It don't work that way. You go, you repent, you ask Jesus to help you. I was an abusive husband for many years. God saved me. God set me free. Can you imagine? My wife would have walked away. My wife could have just said, you know what, I'm tired, I'm done, goodbye. My wife is a beautiful lady. She could have found any, any man to, to marry her, any man to give her a good life. She stood by my side. She stood by my side no matter what, how bad it got, she stood by my side. Amen. Now as a husband, that is my duty. My wife is going through some changes in her life and you know, her mom passed away, her brother just passed away six months uh, before her mom and, and then you know, she took a big hit. You know, I, I try to do whatever I have to do to make my wife happy. You know, guys ask me, how do you do it, Pastor? My wife cleans the mother church. She works at TMC Hospital. On Tuesday, I'm at the church cleaning toilets. I work for myself, so I can take the time off. You know why I do it? Because I want her to come, get out of work, come to church, clean the church, come home and be tired. I want to be able to sit out and talk to her. And by the time she gets home, I got dinner ready. I'm tired. They stop that. <laughs> and I got dinner in. You know? The pastor will tell you, those of you that have been to my house, I, when I cook, when I cook, I don't just cook. You know what I mean? I don't need just grabbing some microwavable food or something and sticking it in the oven. You know what I'm saying? If I make lasagna, I make it out of scratch. They say, Daddy, I, I want some orange chicken. I make it out of scratch. I pull out my diesel and go out there and make the chicken and then come inside. And I do everything because I want her to have a good meal. And I'm still working. And I'm still pastoring. My church is an hour away from my house. I'm not saying that to give myself a pat on the back. Hey, come on, somebody. When I was a drunk, I'd walk an hour away. I'd drive an hour away to cop some beer, get some beer from the bootlegger, to get some alcohol, yeah. some drugs, yeah. whatever it took. Yeah. Now, when it comes to the things of the Lord, I'm telling you, I'm going to do whatever it takes because yeah. God had a plan. Yeah. That's right. Now, you can say, you know, oh, man, you know, Pastor, you're putting this. I'm going to tell you, I got nine kids. I don't, don't, you know, I got nine kids. Right. My oldest daughter. I'm 55. I'll be 55 this July. My oldest daughter is 37 years old. My youngest son is 12 years old. My oldest boy is 30 years old. And I, this year, I think he graduates and gets his medical degree. Listen, so Matt, I never went to school. It ain't because of me. It's because of the great woman God gave me. All my kids have graduated school. I got my little one, he's still, you know, Dad, can I get out of school? No, you can't, Sherry. <laughs> I got six daughters. You know, I got six daughters. I got my son, Frankie. You know what I'm saying, Frankie? I love him. I love him to death. He drives me crazy. He's 28 years old. I think 20, 27, 28. Got three babies with three mamas. <laughs> okay? Three babies with three mamas. I have 17 grandkids. See, God had a plan. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? 
God had a plan. When the world see me, they see me lost. They said, you know what, this drug addict, I'm telling you, my parents, my grandparents used to say this. My parents, my grandparents, my cousins, everybody say, says, Frank is, a, is he's going to end up dead. He's going to end up in prison. He's going to end up, something's going to happen to him. But there's nothing good there. Nothing good. None of my cousins could hang around with me because I was the worst of the worst. Amen. Yet I prayed with each and every one of my cousins before they passed away. Amen. And I'm still here because God had a plan. Right. We can't be afraid to do the will of God. You have to take that step of faith. I'm Amen. here to tell you a man did not know that I did not know how to read. Still don't know how to read. It's a whole different term. Right? You know? Still, but I'm going to tell you, we got to take that step of faith. We got to trust in God. Yes. Because God has a plan. Every time I see Christina, I, I, you guys don't even know how much I love that little girl. I remember when she was little. She gives me hope. That little girl right there gives me hope. Amen. I know pastor's kids and so young, all of them. Heal Frank. He called me that was. David broke down and I'm like, go get him, go pick him up. There I go in my truck and I'm pulling him. I don't know the chain. I don't have tow trucks or nothing, you know what I mean? The chain was pulling him down the road. I see what God is doing. I see what God does. God has a plan. Peter doesn't see the miracle that God is trying to do. He's doubting God. He's doubting the Son of God, Jesus Himself. If it's you, he said, no, he's still. It will, if it's you, I already told you it was me. You know what I mean? That's how God speaks to us sometimes. He's like, come on, don't you get it? You've gone through the fire, you've gone through tests, you, your child's fallen, I've healed them, I've raised them up, you lost your job, I gave you a job, you, your car broke down, I helped you with your car, I helped you with your finances, and you still doubt me. I grew up in the projects in L.A. I slept under the porches of the houses. I remember at the age of 12 years old having to leave my house because my mother didn't want me there. At the age of 13 years old, I lived with the first woman. She was a dispatcher for the police department. I lived with her for two years. At the age of 16, I had my first son. At the age of 17, I don't know where my son gets it from now. You know, I have my second. Two different mamas, too. Then I end up in Tucson. Doing the same thing. Doing the same thing. No hope whatsoever. I had no hope whatsoever. The day came that, you know what? I, I challenged God. If you're here and you're going through something, you're going through a trial, you're saying, oh, Lord, you know, uh, you know, I've been serving God for so many. I've been serving God for 25 years, and God's still good. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You want me to tell you that, that I haven't felt like giving up? Oh, yeah, yeah, I feel like giving up. Many times in my life I felt like giving up. But you know what? It's just a thought. Yeah. I don't entertain it. That's right. Get it out of the way. That's it. You know? Will you trust in God? Will you walk on water? I'm talking, I'm talking about a spiritual walk here. I'm not talking about you walking off the pier. It ain't going to happen. You know, you know, it'll be like filling up your pockets with rocks. You just going go straight to the bottom. I'm talking about a spiritual walk here. Will you trust in God? You need to understand that God can help you through your situation. No matter how bad it may seem. My church is small. And I see what God is doing. I see what God is doing here, blessing your pastor, the family, everybody here. And God has a plan for you. You just got to keep on pushing forward. You got to keep on going forward. You can't be afraid. You can't be afraid. You can't allow the enemy to take away the victory. You can't allow the enemy to take away what God has given you. Amen. Trust in God. Trust in Him. Surrender your life completely to Jesus Christ. Stop playing church. Come on, somebody. Amen. Stop playing church. There's too many people playing church. Right. I was looking at a, at a book. I was listening to an author of a, a book. It's, it's called The Aftershock. Have you guys heard about that book? 
And the guy is talking about all these, the, 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 the promises and, and, and all the, the prophecies of God. I'm telling you, it's some scary stuff. But you know what? We serve a mighty God. As I'm listening to this man speak, and he's talking about all the prophecies, and you know, I mean, I don't know how many of you guys know. I, I got an Apple phone not because I know how to use it, <laughs> but because my kids and my wife gave it to me. Okay, the man was talking about Apple has this thing where you can. I don't know how it scans the palm of your hand. Have you heard about that? It scans the palm of your hand. So what it does, it, it, it does all this. So now instead of grabbing, you know. I didn't know what Apple Pay was. My kids sent me my money. I loaned them some money. They sent it back, and Apple Pay had stayed there for the longest time. So it's kind of like saving money in a piggy bank. But they say that instead of getting your phone and doing this, you can actually grab the palm of your hand. Can you imagine that? We're living in the end of times. Yeah, we are. I'm not telling you that to freak you out, to scare you. I'm going to tell you those things don't scare me. That's right. Because I know Jesus is coming. I know I'm right with God. That's right. I know what I have to do to seek the kingdom of God. And you know what, man? I'm going to do whatever it takes to win souls to the kingdom of God. I pastor in a nation where I'm telling you, broken people, broken homes. You know, we talk about, oh, man, if you went to Mexico to these parts of Mexico, I remember going down there when I was little. I remember going to places my mom was raised and no running water, no showers, no bathrooms. You had to run up in the hills. You know? Oh, if you were, I'm going to tell you something. There's places here in the United States that still need, they need to know Jesus. There's parts in the Autumn Nation that you go down there. I'm telling you, you think you're in a John Wayne movie. You know? I love John Wayne. You know, and I go down there, you see them with their little hats on, with the little, I'm telling you, just like a movie. With the little feather and the little braids. They still speak in their language. And I go down there and I start telling them about Jesus Christ. I'll take one of the brothers with me. I try to speak off. I mean, it don't work. I don't know what happens. <laughs> you know? But I'm going to tell you something. God had a plan. I think about how many years. I remember Pastor Bob and myself. Or before we were even uh, we, we were even pastoring. We would go out there. You went out there and ministered also, right? And it was Pastor uh, Ernie and and uh, there was uh, Ken and a bunch of us who go down there and minister the word of God. And I remember wanting to be sent out to that nation. Just look, everybody would, why do you want to go there, man? It's all dark. There's nobody there. I said, Jesus, Jesus needs to be there. Yeah, that's right. And I'll tell you, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. I got sent out to California. I, I evangelized for another five years and I wanted to go to that nation. My son has an awesome baby. And when she's born, I take over the church. Mm. Now, what's the chances of that happening? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. My granddaughter is from that nation. I take over the church, and, and as I take over the church, one of the first things that people start to say when they come to the church, they go, where's the autumn baby? Tell them like they're looking for Jesus. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they go, where's the autumn baby? I introduce them to my granddaughter and they see it. I mean, it opens up a door. Yeah. People start to come. They start to flood into the church. I'm telling you, we've had people come to the church. I've had gang members come to the church. I had some bunch of gang members surround me one time. I thought they were going to beat me up. They came with baseball bats. I'm telling you, tattoos on their faces, all kinds of crazy ritual stuff that they do. They surrounded me. They said, who are you, Matt? What are you doing here? They started to poke me in the eyes, see my tear drop for real. I said, oh, no, no, don't touch me, bro. I'll call Pastor Julio. Bill no. <laughs> <laughs> backslide. No, I'm not kidding. <laughs> and, and, you know, I just, I, I said, they go, is that real? I showed them my hands. I showed them my tattoos that I had. And they said, oh, yeah, you're real. Before you know it, all these older young men started to show up. They started, they were in a dark corner. They, for some reason, the light being in darkness, you know, and uh, you know, I don't know if it's part of sin in itself, but they're in the dark, and they, they started to say, Pastor Frank, do you remember me? These young men started to come out of the, come out of behind the building, and these guys have tattoos on their faces and long hair. I mean, natives, you know. And they said, do you remember us? I said, no, I don't remember you. I said, when we were young, you would come into the juveniles, and you would come and minister to us. We would pray the sinner's prayer. You were the only one that gave us hope. God had a plan. Yes. You understand? 
I'm telling you this to, to give you hope. I want you to understand that Jesus Christ gave his life for you and for me. There is nothing that God won't do for you. But you got to be willing to surrender your life. Stop playing church. Stop just coming and raising up your hands. Stop just coming and singing the songs and leaving the same way. God wants to fight out. He wants to restore you. Do you understand what I'm saying? He, that he wants to take away that spirit of sarcasm. He wants to take away that, that spirit of selfishness. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, yo soy el hombre. I'm the man of the house. No, 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 no. I'm going to tell you something right now. God has called a man to serve. And if you can't serve your wife and you can't serve your children, then they, it's out the door. Amen. You understand what I'm trying to say? You want to lead your family by example, then you, you be the one that surrenders. You be the one that guides your family. Amen. You be that testimony. Amen. Amen. That's one thing that I learned. I said, if my wife, if I want my wife to do right, then I have to do right. My wife brought me to church. She prayed for me. I didn't believe in God. And when I would come to church, I remember seeing everybody and saying, bunch of Bible thumpers or a bunch of liars. Or, I'm going to tell you something. I'm proud when people talk to me now. I come home, Bible thumper, bro. I don't know what's going with you. You know, they tell me, boy, I know this you don't cause. I'm a Bible thumper. Amen. You know, I'm proud of it. I don't care what anybody said. My wife would bring me to church and I would come to church and I remember challenging God. I said, I want to uh, show me that you're real because I've never seen you. Where were you when I got molested? Where were you when I got beaten as a child? Where were you when my mother got murdered? Where were you when I held my best friend in my arms when my stepfather killed him? Where were you? Because I'd never seen you. See, those were the questions that I had. I was angry towards God. I had doubt that God was real. But he showed me that he was real. Because when I went to I went to that church that day, I remember challenging God the night before. I was outside and I'm angry. I'm smoking a joint, yelling at God, saying, show me if you're real. I went to church the next following day when I went to church. I remember Pastor Marty Carnegie. I'm telling you, check this out how God has a plan. Pastor Marty Carnegie is preaching the word of God. He's looking my way. I don't know who he is. I'm wondering who is this black guy that keeps on looking at me. I'm not serious. And I love Pastor Marty. Me and my kids call him Tio Nero. And, 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 and it's not because, it's because he told them to since they were little. And so, you know, I'm, I'm there and he's looking at me. And I'm like, what's this guy looking at? I'm reading. I said, man, I'm getting upset. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to state this dude. You know, I'm not, I really am. I'm thinking like that. And so he's looking at me and then he would keep on preaching and he'd look at me and he'd keep on preaching. And I remember the third time he says, hold on, I have to do this now. This is in the middle of a service. And he, he, he says, hold on. He turns around and he looks at me as I'm standing on the corner. Now, I wouldn't even sit down because I didn't want anybody to reach out and pray for me because I thought it was a bunch of lies. I remember him calling me out. I, I remember him saying, come here. And, you know, I'm, I'm stoned out of my mind. I, I walk up to him thinking I'm all cool with my bad dogs on. You know what I mean? I had a gold tee coming down. And, and then, no different right now. And then a, a, a long braid down to my waist. And I had these earrings. And I thought I looked cool. You know what I mean? And dressed up like a cholo with my pants up to here. And my shirt down to here. You know what I mean? And I walk up to the front. And when I walk up to the front, he, the first words that came, came out of his mouth is he goes, you want to know if God is real. Wow. How would this man know? How would this man even know that I wanted to know who God was? And he said, I have something to tell you. And when he leaned over, he said something in my ear that up to this day, I don't know what he said. <laughs> I don't know what he said, but I'm going to tell you something right now. And I've always wondered what he said. Because when he, when he said those words, he says, you want to know if God is real? He says, and God has something to tell you. He goes, I don't know what it means. You know what it means. God knows what it means. And when he whispered those words into my ear, like a vision, people say that you'll see your life before your eyes, before you die. Every bad thing I had done, from every person that I had beaten, to every person I had shot, to every person that I had stabbed. Now, I don't say that to give myself a pat on the back because I'm really, I'm not proud of what I've done. But I'm going to tell you, from all those things that I did, he showed me, I seen it in a flash. And I remember standing back and I said, bad high. 
You know, because we're always looking for an excuse. See? <laughs> yeah. When God speaks to you, you're always looking for an excuse. Go tell your wife you're sorry. Oh, I'm not. That ain't God. <laughs> That's the devil. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know? You know? I tell my, my neighbor all the time, I go, hey, tu esposa bro, vi habla con él, y go, es el diablo. I go, no, 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 go talk to your wife. Go talk to your wife. You know? And we're always looking for an excuse. So that was me. I was like, oh man, that's bad high, bad high. Know. You know, I just got a vision. I don't know what it was, but it's bad high. And I remember him telling me, he says, the same way people, he says, the same way people follow you for the devil, they're going to follow you for Jesus Christ. Now I'm thinking, why does this man know who I am? Everywhere I go, I had a pack of guys with me. I said, well, how does he know who I am? How does he know anything about me? He didn't know, but God knew. God had a plan. And he says, you have a calling to preach the word of God. I really started laughing then. I said, man, I don't even know how to read. And this guy told me, I, I have a calling to preach. I can't even read the cat in the hat. <laughs> so yet this guy wants me to read <laughs> and I said are you done I remember walking away I remember turning away from him and walking away and going back to where I was standing and he continued to preach God has a plan this is when he continued to preach all eyes were off of me do you understand what I'm saying back on the preacher I'm standing behind that on the wall. And I challenged God again. I said, is that all you got? I'm telling you. What? Is that all you got? See, I, I'm telling you, you. Some of you guys have been through some stuff and you know it's God. And you still question him. Doubt. Is that all you got? I said, if you're the God that these people believe in, you're going to stop me from touching my wife. I was an abusive husband. She didn't deserve it. Nobody deserves that. That's right. I was a drunk. I said, you're going to stop me from touching my wife? You're going to stop me from drinking? I've been drinking since I was 12 years old. I said, you're going to stop me from doing drugs? You're going to take away all this bitterness? You're going to take away all this hate that I have within me? Not tomorrow. Not next week. Not next month. But today. And when I said those words, I remember telling God, I said, today... And if you change me and you set me free, I will serve you for the rest of my life. And those were the last words that I said. And those are the words that many people are afraid to say. Yeah. Because when I said those words, I fell on my knees. I started to cry like a child. But it wasn't out of pain. But I was relieved from all the hatred and all the bitterness that was inside of me. And God set me free. Yes, amen. God set me free. I'm going to tell you, I got up from there never again to touch another drug, never again to touch another cigarette, never again to touch my wife in any kind of way. Thank you, Jesus. My wife left me because she thought I was crazy. I came home one day and she had packed up and she had left me. I had taken all my earrings and I made her a ring that says Ephesians 5.25, love your wife has gotten love to the church and gave herself for it. Why? Because I know I needed to love my wife. Husbands, you know what that scripture means? Submit to your wife. Okay, stop trying to use the scripture. Wives, submit to your... Yeah, yeah, that comes with it. But God calls the man to submit first. Because if you submit, then you've submitted to God. Amen? I love my wife. I did God's will. And even though she left me, I was still going to serve God with or without her. Because I knew that God had a plan. Amen. He says, trust in me. Amen. Don't doubt me. Don't ask me, is it you? If it's you, uh, command me to walk on water. No, he said, it's me. Trust me. I got you. Reach out. Grab my hand. Do you understand what I'm saying? I reached out. I gave my hand to the Lord. I started to serve him. I started to give him. I, I did everything that I had to do and still doing what I have to do. Amen. There's a point in my life where I started to go through some trials even now. And I remember telling my daughter, I said, man, my mother, she's driving me crazy. <laughs> and I started to pray. I share a lot of me because I want you guys to understand we all go through it. 
And my daughter called me one day and she goes, Daddy, you ever thought that maybe God's trying to change you a little bit more? And I said, baby, you're right. When she said those words to me, I said, you're right. I knew it was God. God used my baby girl to speak into my life. And I said, you know what? My prayer life needs to get back. That's right. Not that I wasn't praying, but I needed to, <laughs> Amen. you know, Amen. push it a notch. You know what I'm saying? God has a plan for your life. You're here this evening. You have doubts in your mind, financial, marriage, whatever the case may be, your children, whatever it may be, God wants to do something in your life. Yes, He does. But you've got to surrender to Jesus. He can't do what you do. For you, which you don't give in return. Do you understand what I'm saying? You want to you wanna come to church and do nothing but sit. I'm not saying that that's what you're doing, but I'm saying some of us do. I know, I'm, I'm guilty. We're all guilty, believe me. Come to church. Raise up your hand. Do the pokey pokey. And go home. <laughs> and think that everything's going to change. Yeah, it doesn't right. change. It's, right. it's like trying to get on a diet. You know what I mean? <laughs> trying to drink them green, green diets. <laughs> And not exercise. Come on, somebody. You got to do something. You understand what I'm saying? You got to do something. You got to you got to practice what you preach. You're going to tell your kid about Jesus. Oh, baby, you got to give your life to Jesus. Then start. Be an example. Be an example. You want your children to change? You be an example. You want your grandchildren to change? You be an example. You know? Don't pray with your grandkids because it looks cute. Pray with them because it means something. Do yeah. you understand what I'm saying? You need to trust in God. Give your life completely to Jesus. Amen? Amen. I like every head bowed and every eye closed in reference to our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If you're here this evening and you do not have a personal relationship with Jesus and you would like to have a personal relationship with Jesus, raise up your hand. Is there anyone here this evening that does not have a personal relationship with Jesus and would like to have a personal relationship with Jesus? Raise up your hand. We'd love to pray with you. If there's anyone listening online and, and you like to give yourself your life to Jesus, right there where you're at, acknowledge God by raising, them, raising up your hand. Don't worry if anyone's around you. Don't worry if you're by yourself and you think you're going to look great. You raise up your hand. You acknowledge God by raising your hand. Allow Jesus to come into your heart. Accept Him as your Lord and Savior. Amen? I want you to pray this prayer. If you're listening and you raise up your hand or you're here this evening and you haven't raised up your hand, but you want to pray this prayer, pray this prayer. Say, right now, I ask you, Lord, to come into my heart. Forgive me, for I know that I'm a sinner. I know you gave your only begotten Son to die on the cross for my sins. The blood of Jesus makes me whole. The blood of Jesus sets me free. I thank you and I give you praise. Amen. You know, now I want to speak to the church. I want you to ask yourself a question. Are you doubting God? Are you doubting God in these times of, of trials? Are you doubting God, you know, and, and starting to question God? Oh, well, if God was real or if God, well, why, why are these things happening? Why is this virus doing this and taking this person and taking that person? I mean, ask yourself that question. Have you doubted God? Are you doubting God? Because I'm here to tell you this, this evening that God loves you. Amen. He will not leave you nor forsake you. The situation doesn't matter. He wants to save you. Amen. The prophecies of God will come to pass. Whether we like it or not. Whether we agree on it or not. Jesus loves you. You're here and maybe you're going through something in your marriage. Maybe whatever the case may be. God wants to bless you. Hold on. Hold on. To those of you that are married, I understand that marriage is hard. I understand that you're going to go through some trials. But I'm going to tell you something. It's worth the trial. It's worth the fight. You're going to become stronger. God's going to bless you. Amen. 
I'm not saying that if you're in an abusive relationship or whatever. No, 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 no. I'm trying to tell you that God is in control. You got to keep on seeking the kingdom of God. Allow Him to guide you. Allow Him to touch you. You can't change the other person, but Jesus can. You want them to change? Pray for them. But don't pray. Don't, don't, don't do a religious prayer. Pray. Give it all to Jesus. Get on your knees and seek the kingdom of God. Allow Him to move in your life. Amen. When God starts to move, then you start to lose doubt. You start to reach out. Then you can walk on water. Come on, somebody. The day came when you came to Jesus and you bowed your knee and you asked Him into your heart and you were full of joy and you're like, man, I want to feel like this every day. And you can. You just got to give it your all. See, when you came to church the very first time, you came ready to surrender yourself completely. You wanted to see some change. So anything was good, amen? Now we come to church and there's a doubt. I don't know if God can fix this. You know, we've been going through some stuff. We've been going through some trials. and I don't know if God can fix this. Nothing's impossible for God, right? Nothing is impossible. He can fix everything and anything if you give it to Him. Amen? Yes. But you got to trust in God. Do you trust in God? Get rid of that spirit of doubt. Stop entertaining that spirit of doubt. Allow Jesus to move in your life. These altars are open. You come, you pray. You seek the kingdom of God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Father God.
through my yelling and my screaming, like I said, my wife says I don't need a microphone. <laughs> I hope I gave you some kind of hope. There is hope in Jesus. Yeah. If God can restore someone like me, that's what I always compare it to. If God can restore someone like me, can you imagine what he can do with you? You see that? Church, so I ain't gonna pray for you, bro. I'll be praying. <laughs> Even through your hard times, God was with you. And you know that. It didn't matter what happened, God was with you. You give me so much hope. Because I, I've seen my daughters fall, and I've seen them come up, and I'm you know, serving God. And, I've always loved you. I've always loved you because I know that God has a plan for you. God's going to bless you. It's a great blessing. But this is just the beginning. I can flourish like a, like a bouquet of roses, girl. You know what I'm saying? When I'm talking to one, the ones they sell at Home Depot. You know what I mean? <laughs> Real nice.
Can I tell you it would be good? Yes. Can I tell you this, this guy's a walking miracle, amen. Me and Frank get along because we were both very crazy. We weren't in gangs, but we were drug crazed out of our minds. And that God could save people like us. He can save anybody. Before we go, Frank, I want you to come up here. We're going to pray. Why don't you guys stand up? God has been laying this on my heart, amen, for a bit, but I haven't really felt God releasing. But we've gone through a, a dark time. And everybody goes, Jesus went through a dark time. And the Bible says that Jesus had to suffer the things that he suffered so that he could be a merciful Savior. That he was not a God that was not touched by uh, trouble and hardship, but he is a good God because he suffered many things. Paul goes on to say, Lord, we've suffered all these things. And he says, and we went through all this so we can show mercy and grace the way you have shown us mercy and grace. And people to be able to minister true mercy and grace and love, they have to be wounded and hurt deeply. Just the way it is. And Paul's and Peter was like, I'm, I'm going to suffer just like you. And, and, and God was telling him, Jesus, he says, Peter, not yet. He goes, but you will. Don't you worry. You're going to suffer the same things I've gone through. Not yet. Don't, don't even be wanting them yet, Peter, because you ain't ready, boy. But you're going to suffer. You've gone through some things, and it's not, not to break you or to hurt you. It's so that you can bring hope and joy, grace and mercy, genuine. Because, listen, this dark time is going to end. It is coming to an end. This cloud is going to be lifted and it's going to be replaced with joy and with peace. And when you do, you begin to serve and to love and to help. And God is going to bring people into your path that you're going to be saying, you know what? You're not going to stay in that place. Because that's not God's plan. And God is going to help you to minister, to bring hope and help into people's lives. This is going to pass and they'll say, and this too shall pass. It's going to end. It's going to end very soon. You just begin to thank God and worship God. The Bible says, set your mind upon things that are good. Put your thoughts upon Jesus. Just begin to worship Him and thank Him for all that you have, because you are very blessed. Don't ever lose sight of that. You've got a good husband, amen. You've got wonderful children. You've got a great church that loves you. And most of all, you have a wonderful Savior who loves you. And when he sees you, he says, that is my daughter, Eva. And I love her. That's all the good guys. Lift up your hands, church. Let's pray. Let Frank was here. Let me pray. Father, we just want to pray right now. Bind every torment on us. We bring this power and we thank you, God, for the work that you are doing right now. God, we bear might of the bond for the calling and the destiny and the plan that you have for them even now, God. God, you give them great grace and great mercy, a heart and a burden for the lost, God, a strength that goes beyond our understanding of joy that is anchored in you, a peace, God, that comes from knowing you, oh God. We thank you right now, God, for this wonderful, Wonderful God. And we thank you for the peace and the joy that you are bringing even now. And we give you the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. God is good. Amen. Amen. God is good. Let's bring them. I'm sorry, I'm not going to preach, but listen. Hallelujah. This is just God. God has something far beyond you guys even understand. Maybe it hasn't even entered into your mind. And here in this season, God is going to begin to stir you like he's never stirred you before. God is going to begin to put thoughts and dreams and visions and feelings like you've never had and experienced God in a way that is so far beyond anything you've ever felt. And you're going to say, oh, God, what is going on? And God is going to begin to reveal himself and give you great grace and great favor. And God is saying, son, you just... 
Put me first and seek me like never before and you're going to see my glory. You're going to see my hand upon you. And God has brought you here to be a blessing for as long as he has you here. But listen, I'm telling you, while you're here, you're going to grow by leaps and bounds. God's going to do something so wonderful and beautiful. And wherever God takes you, whatever God has, he's putting some powerful things in you right now. He's going to teach you things and show you things, man. You're going to have stories to share at fellowship. Oh, you went really that? No, oh, let me tell you what God did. Let me tell you about this miracle of how God came through. And people are going to say, wow, that is amazing. God's hand is upon your life. God is going to touch you and God. Like never before. He's going to bring a confidence, not that you lack confidence but not so much in you and in your ability, more in who God is and in the glory and in the grace and in the love and in the sustaining power of God. Yes. And you're going to say, wow, God, you are. You're going to see him greater than you've ever seen him before. You're going to grow in him. Your faith is going to be a rich, deep faith. Your love and your joy for God is going to be something beyond you ever understood or even comprehended. And I don't know why, but amen. God is blessing you guys with us. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. And we are so thankful for that. But no, listen. But amen. I'm, I'm going to want to quote Spider-Man, but to whom much is given, amen. <laughs> much is required. And God is going to say, you're going to give me your heart. And you're going to serve me. And let's just pray for them, amen. Lift up your hands. Father, we just thank you, God, for this thing that you have begun, for this journey of grace, this supernatural journey, of power, God, of your Holy Spirit being poured out, of revelation, God, of understanding, of grace and mercy and favor, Lord, let your will be done. Cause your hand to rest upon this couple mightily, God, and use them for your glory. And we thank you, God, that you have brought them to be a part of this family. And we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Before you go, amen, thank Pastor Frank. Amen. Listen, when he talks about the reservation being crazy, listen, the reservation is crazy. You think TJ's bad, amen. Go out to cells, amen. Yeah, it's, it's like the wild, wild west out there. So be praying for him, amen, that God would give him supernatural grace and favor. He is a dear friend. I loved him. If I wasn't married, I might leave. Uh, maybe marry him. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, the Bible says that David loved Jonathan as he loves his own soul. And I love Frank as I love my own soul. Frank is a dear, dear, dear friend of mine and of my family. It was such a blessing to have him here. So tell him, amen, thank you, amen, and just... Say a few kind words before we go. Let's bow our heads. Amen. We're going to be dismissed. Brother Michael McBride, why don't you dismiss us in prayer? Lord, well, thank you for your mercy, God, and your grace, God. And we're even here today to hear such a message, God. We can ask, God, that you can still in our hearts, God, our hope, God, beyond what we see, even beyond what we've been through, God. And we look unto you, God. If you are able, God, to deliver and satisfy, God, to help us in our faith, God. We ask God that you just continue drawing us and using our lives, God, to make an example to this generation, God. To show us your love and kindness that we might extend it unto others, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, church, Lord.